Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at how you can customize the visual options of the TNS 530 by working title. Uh, this is a relatively straightforward video, but I welcome you to experiment quite a bit with this to find something that works for you. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we're chilling here, uh, basically on course from uh, that last video there, making some pretty good progress. And you know, we decided we want to go ahead and uh, change some of the fields and options that we have on our GPS itself. So the first things first, uh, before we start getting carried away with the visual options on this, I just want to make sure that you're on the correct page before you start going nutters here. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is on the bottom of the page, we're currently on nav page two. If I actually were to take the push cursor and pull back one, it's going to take you to that default nav page, which is going to be providing you with all the critical information that you're probably going to need on your flight. Now, a lot of pilots, uh, myself included, uh, what we do if we have a dual setup like this in a real plane is we usually use the bottom one to provide us like the nitty gritty details. And we usually use the top one to provide us with the more kind of like, you know, almost like the moving map sort of a thing like that. So first things first, um, now that we're on this page and we're ready to rock, I'm going to press the menu button. There's a bunch of different options you're going to have in here, depending on what you want to do. Uh, the first one's going to say display next rad. Uh, next rad refers to a radar delivery service, which will provide you with some idea of what the individual weather is. Now I'm using real world weather today, so it would not surprise me if there's a little bit of nastiness. But go ahead and turn that on and you see nothing up here on the screen itself. I'm using that quite a bit here. Oh yeah, we've got some uh, shenanigans going up in New York here, which, you know, it's Albany, it's the winter, it's going to happen kind of a thing like that. So you have a pretty good idea of where the weather storms are, even though you're not equipped with a weather radar. Now, I don't necessarily recommend you fly around with that all the time is because it's going to cause some interesting issues as far as a uh, performance and basically not being able to see. Oh my God, look at the ground speed on this thing. What am I diving? Nah, it's just really, really windy from the, basically the Southwest today. That's awesome. I've never seen a 172 do that speed before. That's impressive. That's Mooney speeds. Anyway, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is I'm going to press the menus option. And I'm going to go down to this thing that says change fields. Now, when you press the enter key here, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to highlight a different field on our screen itself. You'll notice we have several default fields and the fields are defined by these little guys with the text. We have desired track, track, distance, ground speed, and estimated time en route. You'll notice if I go ahead and I'll wiggle this sucker right here, it will tell you which ones you can change. We can only change the four that are displayed on here. The track option is always going to be visible. So let's go down to uh, distance real quick here. Let's say I don't want to look at the distance one for a reason. You know, I can come down here and look at distance if I want to see that. So what I'm going to do is after highlighting it, again, I'm still in menu mode here, I can go ahead and roll my mouse on this and it's going to bring up a menu where I can choose what I want to actually see up in that corner. So one of the fun things everybody likes to do, of course, is I can scroll down here for ETA, which is very helpful. You can also come down here for things like cross track or vertical speed required. Uh, one thing I really like about vertical speed required is this will let you know if you've dialed in the VNAV options exactly what you need to do. Of course, you've got ground speed, you have desired track, bearing, distance, everything you can imagine under the sun in here. Uh, the GPS 750 also is very similar in this regard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one. I'm going to leave this one alone because I kind of like that. So I'm going to press the clear key. What I am going to do though, is I'm going to come down here to where it says ETE. I'm going to go ahead and wiggle the mouse here. And I'm going to dial this to ETA. So now when I press this, it will tell me what time I'm going to cross that waypoint, which is actually fairly uh, valuable as far as us if we're trying to say, oh, I'll be there at 730 or something. I can now look over here and say it's going to be about 735, actually. So now when I'm done, I can go ahead and down here. And of course, I can press the clear key. And you'll notice it's no longer flashing at me because this is now visible. So now if I look down, I can see how much time it's going to take me on route here, as well as what time I'm actually going to arrive at my particular waypoint, which is pretty valuable information depending on what you want. Now, I know you're thinking now, what happens if I press the enter key down here? Well, the procedure is exactly the same. So now I can change the fields here too. So I can press the enter key and now notice I can choose my cross track and stuff like that, my ET key. So I can come over here and wiggle this out and look at that. It's the exact same menu that we saw. Again, you can press clear to exit. In this case, I'm going to leave it at cross track. I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't need anything fancy in that regard. Tap the clear key one more time to go ahead and exit out of changing those fields. So it's like, well, that's not bad. Is there anything else you can do to adjust the screen? Yeah, sure. So the next thing I like to do is this lovely clear button here. If you tap the clear button once, um, it's not going to do anything in the world, except it'll actually reduce the amount of detail on the screen. Now, if you look right where my mouse is rotating, where it says 20 minus 2, if I press it one more time, see how it says 20 minus 3? You basically shut off everything on the screen except you and your destination and any critical airspaces that are along the way. So if you actually look now, all the garbage is gone. Now, if I want to bring it back, I can press clear again and whoosh. <laughs> you can see how everything gets very, very crowded very, very quickly. Now, in the real world, of course, you have to deal with things like highways, which somebody always leaves on every single time. So unfortunately, that's not something you're going to have to deal with another day. 
Now you're probably going, wow, that's, that's pretty useful. I can finally customize the fields in a way that makes more sense to me. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of putting all my time down here and all my speed and direction down here. That's just kind of how I feel about it in the real world. But again, everybody's different. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to my next page here. I'll go ahead and pop it down here so you can see the two. Now you're going to notice there's uh, two different things here. Uh, one guy, you can see that we're tracking in the direction. The map is tracking the direction of my nose. In this one, you're going to notice the map is tracking towards the north. Uh, how do we know that? Because we can see this little end here. I just want to make sure I'm not slowing down. I'm going <laughs> to... I haven't looked out the window in a while. I should probably look. Yeah, looks pretty good to me. All right, so we know this as like that. So now when you press the menu button, you're going to have a completely different set of options here. You're going to know set of map. You're going to have a data fields option, next rad, change field, restore defaults. Now, the first thing you need to watch out for is this map is not the same thing as the first map that we saw here. So like I said, uh, when I use this in the real world, I'm going to leave this one alone because it just kind of gets in the way. In the flight sim, uh, generally, I kind of just fits with this one and leave that one kind of alone. So I'm going to go ahead and hit clear. I'm actually going to go back to page one here for that one. So I'm going to go to set up map. You have a bunch of different options here under setup map. Uh, the first things first is you have your group of options. You have your orientation, you have your auto zoom, your land data, and aviation data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call down here. I'm going to go ahead and flip this. You'll notice you can change this to north up. So now if you're actually to take a look at the two sets of maps, you'll notice they have the same orientation. Uh, as a general rule, I recommend whatever one you keep, <clears throat> definitely keep them for both. I would not uh, mix and match because uh, you're going to end up making yourself insane otherwise. Next option is auto zoom, which is super helpful. It will zoom in and out for you. You have land data. Obviously, watch what happens if you shut that off. Uh, this one's kind of fun. Uh, the moment you do that, it's going to shut down any critical mountains or anything like that that we don't need to be looking at. And of course, you have the aviation data as well, which you can turn on and off. At this zoom, you're not really going to notice it so much. So let's go to the menu page. Clear, clear. Go ahead and zoom in again. See if you can kind of, kind of extract some of those details. Yes, and you can see some of those details all pretty much right away start to appear. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to leave this off. I'm actually going to shut off aviation data. I just don't need it today. It's just just getting my way kind of thing. Now, if you come up to the top option here, you'll notice if you give this a wiggle that you have alternate options that you can use in this map display. So if I scroll up to the, uh, whoa, whoa, I felt a bump there. I shouldn't be too nervous, I guess. Let's press the enter right here. And notice we have no weather options. Sigh. Uh, if we go to traffic, you can go to traffic. Now, the traffic options are actually pretty cool because what you can do is you can come down here to all traffic and you can actually define things as being things that are very close, uh, things that are proximity. You can display all the traffic at one time, pretty much anything you need. The other option you get, of course, is to be able to set the default range of the traffic that you're interested in. In this case, I love the fact that you can turn on traffic sing symbols at 3,500 feet, which seems a little dangerous. And of course, you can adjust when the traffic gets a label within 20 meet, uh, miles in this case. So if we wanted the traffic labels to come on at 35, we could come in here and dial in that feature as well. Our next page, of course, is going to be the waypoint option. Pressing this one, what this will do is this will give you the ability to customize what we see as far as the waypoints themselves. You'll notice, by the way, with our active flight plan, it's a visible, big text, long distance. All these different airports are very, very small. You can come in here and tweak the size. You know, if I want to come here, I've got some small airports here. Let's say I want to go ahead and tweak that airport over on my left. Uh, let's say I want this to be, uh, I don't know why I want large text, but you see how it gets honking? So it makes it possible to differentiate the different style airports based on the size of the text. So now what I can do is I can set this to small, for example. I can come up to a medium airport. Oop, well, I'll leave that one alone. Uh, let's go up to a medium airports real quick. I can set this one to be medium. And I can go up here and set large airports to be large text. Enter. So now by doing that, I can tell the size of the airport just by looking at it. Again, if you need to exit out, you can always hit the clear key. You can see pretty clearly that our biggest airport here is Bath, but you can tell that, you know, Orange County over here, oh, that's actually not orange. Uh, it's right over this, Worcester, sorry. Uh, it's a little bit smaller. This one's a little bit smaller. This one's a little bit bigger, but it acts as a great reference for you when you need to pick airports that are potentially you're going to have to jump on to. So someone there, I'm going to go over to the airspace option, press enter. Notice there's no choices. In the real world, of course, you could dial what type of airspaces you want to look at. Uh, this is very critical for me personally because the airspace display gets crowded, especially if you're like me and you're probably using uh, some kind of four flight or you know, iFly GPS or something like that, which makes it a little bit easier to kind of navigate all this. So going back up to the menu option, whoop, let's clear the clear button to go back to default nav. Of course, we have this great thing that says change fields. But the problem is there are no fields to look at right now. If you want to actually look at some fields, let's clear this out, we have to turn the fields on. So I'm going to press menu, I'm going to go down to data fields on, press the enter key, and you'll notice now we've got all of our data fields on the side. Now some people are like, why don't you just use this view, it's more clear. Please, I'll use the view that works best for you, trust me. 
But if you need to, you can come in here and kind of experiment a little bit with these different fields. Uh, one thing that, of course, uh, the wifey always likes to do is uh, she'll come in here, go to menu, and she'll go down to change fields. And she'll go ahead and uh, come down here where it says ET, uh, TRK, which we don't really care about that much. And she'd go in here and change this to be ETA, which I always find kind of amusing. So now you have your ETE and your ETA on the same screen at the same time, which is kind of cool. But honestly, this DTK is very critical in the real world because it allows me to set up the HSI so that I'm able to see it. Now let's go ahead and clear this out. I'm going to go back to menu option, go back to uh, data fields off, press that button. You're probably saying, hey, can we turn our data fields down here? E yeah, you can. But uh, the problem with that is, let me just show you. You have like no map anymore. It's like this little tiny, like two and a half inch display. Like there's not a lot to see. And again, like I said, in the real world, usually what I do is I stick to uh, leaving this one in this page or I do my little uh, waypoint searches and stuff like that. So they don't have to stress about that too, too much as far as a uh, typical flight goes. Now, the last thing I'm going to share with you, and uh, again, this is all about setup. Oh, there's a Quabbin Reservoir. Ooh, it's getting a little, getting a little bumpy today. I had a feeling it was going to be a bit bumpy. It was a little windy when I was driving around earlier. Uh, so the last thing we're going to take a look at is if you mess this all up and you want to go back to original. Go to the menu option. There's a great thing. This is restore defaults. Just come over there and press the enter key and it snaps everything back to normal. So that's a great way. You'll notice, of course, it ignores the size of the text that I dialed in, but you'll notice that everything else is uh, now as far as like display and shapes and sizes, all that's going to be reset. So it's a little bit easier to operate. Uh, one of the great things, of course, is in the real world, this will remember what you just did to that. Um, in the simulator, unfortunately, it's not going to remember all the stuff that you did to that. So you have to kind of work with what you got sort of a thing and kind of work with it from there. But other than that, uh, that's kind of a quick little tutorial on showing you how you can customize these displays. If you're looking for what do I do in the real world, you're looking at it right there. Uh, that's what mine looks like when I fly in the Cessna 182. Basically, the top half is going to tell me all my map stuff. The bottom half is going to tell me how on course I am. And again, the real world, too, is you'll be alternating between using the GPS and, uh, I'm sorry, not using the autopilot half the time. The other half of the time, you're probably going to be flying by hand, only on account of the fact that the GPS is not perfect in certain kinds of conditions. But man, is it nice to hold the wheel for you. Enjoy.